Good day. I'm Tom Costello. I am in for Halley. And right now, millions are pulling out snow shovels, digging out in the middle of wild weather, stretching from coast to coast. We first want to go to the Midwest, where blizzard conditions are setting the stage now for a white weekend and then Thanksgiving. Yesterday was Chicago's snowiest November day in five years. I was stuck at O'Hare. 65% of flights there were delayed. And did you see the Cleveland Browns celebrating their win last night over Pittsburgh on the field? A snowball fight broke out. Uh, they took full advantage of the weather. Snow is now also piling up on parts of the Northeast following long overdue rain. Inches are blanketing communities from Pennsylvania through New England. And in the West, the atmospheric river storm is now bringing down, toppling trees, potentially dropping up to 15 inches on an already soaked Northern California. Look at that. That same storm system left two people dead in Washington State this week. Hundreds of thousands are still without power. And take a look at the freezing roads in the Sierra Nevada mountains. A lot of flights in the region canceled because of all of this. Our NBC News team, all over it as you would expect. Meteorologist Bill Karen's standing by. Sam Brock is on the ground in Scranton, PA, but we want to first go to Chase Kane. He's in California. Uh, Chase, you've been telling us how this is going to get progressively worse this week. So what's it looking like now? Tom, ironically, the rain has stopped where we are, but that's deceiving because now we have about a half dozen rivers across Northern California, which are like this in a river flood warning. This is the Navarro River in Mendocino County. And in 48 hours, this has risen 20 five feet to give you a sense of it and you can kind of see the trees over here where the water is you know up several feet on these trees but i mean just imagine 48 hours ago this was really just a trickle through here the navarro river uh, is flowing this way is west toward the pacific ocean and just a few miles downstream from where we are this river has overtopped the banks and has flooded california highway 128 so caltrans had to completely shut down highway 128 there are a few other roads in sonoma and mendocino counties just north of the san francisco bay area which are facing similar situations where they've had uh, rivers and streams flood the road and they've had to close a few roads down. They've had some isolated landslides and rock slides as well. That's part of the reason that Sonoma County, just to our east, uh, several school districts in Sonoma canceled classes today. They didn't want students and school buses out on these roads. They also had a few trees down overnight. Uh, there have also been uh, several reports of swift, wa swift water rescues, I should say, uh, over the past 12, 24 hours here in Northern California because this rain came down hard, but it also came down over the course of many days. Parts of Mendocino and, Mendocino and Sonoma County had 12, even up to 17 inches of rain. And so it is tapering off now, but still a little, little bit of rain over the next few hours. Uh, the rivers are hopefully getting close to cresting. But again, six rivers under a river flood warning. So they're asking folks to, you know, please, if you encounter water on the road, Tom, don't drive through it. Last thing you want to do. Yeah, boy, that's a lot of water behind you there. Uh, Chase, thank you very much. Let's go to Sam Brock right now. He's up in PA. Uh, Sam, it's been rain and then snow in the east, but it's actually welcome a welcome change, right, because of the fire dangers uh, and the dryness we're seeing here on the east side. From that standpoint, Tom, it has been significant. There have been hundreds of fires in these drought-stricken states. New York City, for example, had some 300-plus fires just this month. We're in Scranton right now, Pennsylvania, also going through similar drought-like conditions, brush fires popping up all the time. The snow itself has started to really lighten up. It was coming down heavily from about 6 or 7 o'clock last night through basically 1 o'clock this afternoon. We're now stuck at about 5 or 6 inches total. You can see my foot here. It's up to about my ankle, and that's after the snow has settled nearby some of the highs in terms of the Poconos peaks. 20 or so inches, so it has been a ton of snow. It is beautiful to look at and incredibly dangerous. And we got a reminder of that earlier today as there's been developing news about a confirmed fatality. A 36-year-old man in Monroe County, Pennsylvania, who was just driving his car, spun out on the snow, went into the opposite lane of traffic and hit someone in a box truck. And that 36-year-old man died. It's really a reminder of why law enforcement is so adamant about people being careful when they're driving in these kinds of conditions. Also, Tom, just the power outages have been significant. Again, 110,000 customers just in Pennsylvania still with no power. You look over my shoulder right now, you see this tree that's been pulled down into the middle of the street just from the weight of the snow. Beyond that, there are power lines that are caked in ice and snow that are just sort of drooped in the middle of the road, or I should say hanging suspended over the road. So it, again, 
reminds you why this can be so problematic and such a big deal for people that are worried about, say, their livelihood, getting their electricity if they're older or disabled. That is the case with yeah. one woman I found today, Maria Rosado, who does deal with disabilities. She talked about how this totally blindsided her in terms of the amount of the snowfall. Take a listen. I was contemplating yesterday whether I should just salt or not, but it was all rain, and that's what they were predicting. So I'm like, no, you know, I'm not going to salt. I wasn't expecting this yeah. at all. So here's the update for folks who are waiting right now to find out when they're going to get their power back. We just talked to PPL. That's the largest provider for this part of Pennsylvania. They say 24 hours, best case scenario on Saturday, worst case scenario, Sunday, 48 hours. But Oy. they have extra teams out there right now working 16-hour shifts. Yeah, I know, especially when the temperature's in the 30s, right? But they're working as hard as they can right now to resolve that. Yeah. Well, if they lost power, hopefully they're streaming you and watching you on the uh, on their cell phones. Uh, Sam, thank you very much. Let's go to get to NBC's Bill Karens right now. Bill, what can uh, people expect weather-wise heading into what is really going to end up being one of the busiest travel weeks of the entire year going into Thanksgiving? It, Tom, we need to get rid of these two storms first, and then we'll start talking about the next big storm that's likely going to impact Wednesday to Thursday to Friday at the end of next week, of course, right during the peak of the travel. So here's the huge storm in the east, still spinning right over the top here of New York and Pennsylvania. We've had snow bands around it, mixed with rain all day today from Buffalo all the way down to Washington, D.C., and now we're going to start to see some additional rain piling up around Boston. The highest total I've seen, 20 inches in High Point, New Jersey, highest spot wow. in the state. Uh, uh, a couple spots in the Poconos were around 17. And the Catskills, we had a report of 117-inch total. If you watched that football game last night, uh, Wycliffe is not that far away from downtown Cleveland. They had eight inches of snow. A lot of our big cities, you know, this was an elevation event. The lower valleys didn't get as much. But in D.C., we did see our first flakes officially at the airport. Now, as far as the west goes, we're starting to get rid of this last storm. It's, the effects in the northwest are over, but we still have terrific torrential rain. It's not going to be a fun rush hour. We have flash flood warnings in effect for the north portion of the bay here. It is just downpour right now in San Francisco. Santa Rosa, this area has had tremendous amount of flooding, and it looks like we have about another hour or two to go before that rainfall stops. So additional rain, another one to two inches. The highest total of rain I've seen was heading now towards 16 inches. That's like an incredible amount of rain in only three days. So now let's talk travel. As we head into Sunday, new storm comes into the west. So interstate five that's going to be problematic for travel notice everywhere in the east of the rockies we're good we get rid of that storm so everyone on you know east of the rockies sunday's no problems airport should be all right maybe a little gusty with isolated delays from new york to boston but that's it and driving wise heading through the rockies and i-5 so now let's fast forward to what they call tom the busiest travel day of the year and that's the wednesday before thanksgiving we're starting to watch our storm coming through the rockies out into the plains so that you know interstate 80 could have minor issues also 70 and I-25 going through Colorado. The East Coast, you're just fine on Wednesday. But as we head towards Thursday, that's when things change. And I'll give you a little sneak peek at Thursday. This storm is going to be heading to the east. We're going to have heavy rain, maybe even some thunderstorms. The northern edge of this should be snow. And it looks to move into the I-95 corridor during Thanksgiving Day. So obviously the Macy's Parade, we have to talk about that impacts possible. Everyone in the west is clear as could be. So, Tom, not what you want to see is a big storm Wednesday into Thanksgiving Day. Boy, it looks like it's going to be a wet Thanksgiving on the East Coast. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.